FSU's Project Osceola has been in effect for quite some time. Holy smokes. Welcome to episode 365 of College Football's Peek Around the Corner with your host, Greg Flugar. We cover everything in college football because we love everything in college football. And if you do as well, please subscribe to our channel. Smash the like button if you like our content. Share the video with your family and friends. Let's not waste any more time. Sportacle puts out an article last night, late last night. FSU's Project Osceola private equity push began in 2022. Not in 2023, but the year before that, in 2022, by Evan Navi Williams and Daniel LeBitt. Again, the Sportical article that came out last night, Florida State's university administrators spent much of the first half of 2023 speaking with at least two private equity firms, Sixth Street and Art Tolls Partners, about the possibility of providing money to help fund the Seminoles Athletic Department, according to a series of emails released by the school on Tuesday, yesterday. We provide a link in the description. You can read the whole article. Please put down your comments and thoughts in the comments section below the video. The communications, many of which are heavily redacted, were given a sportical in response to a public records request made back in August. The materials provide new insight into Florida State's work with J.P. Morgan Chase to explore institutional investment for its athletic department, which would be a first for college athletics. Florida State is hoping to maintain its position among the college sports elite but recently said that staying in the ACC would produce a $30 million gap between its income and that of its peers in other leagues, the SEC and the Big Ten. Buying its way out of the ACC, the school says, could cost $572 million. The private equity talks were internally nicknamed Project Osceola. After the famous Seminole leader and FSU mascot, and they appear to center on the creation of a new cult to house commercial rights from the school's athletic department. The entity would then take an outside capital. This structure has become common for PE investments in sports, including Silver Lake's backing of New Zealand All Blacks rugby team and CVC's financing of La Liga, the top Spanish soccer team, league, excuse me, league. Sixth Street is still active in talks with Florida State about a possible investment, while Arctos is not. So Sixth Street is still in the game, still having active talks with Florida State, according to multiple people familiar with the negotiations. Representatives of Sixth Street and Arctos declined to comment. Representatives for J.P. Morgan and Florida State did not immediately respond to request for comment. The initial discussions between J.P. Morgan and Florida State date back to at least the summer of 2022, the documents show. Florida State has been planning this. The parties executed a non-disclosure agreement that August, which was signed by Florida State's Board of Trustees Chairman Peter Collins and Eric Manel, the Managing Director and Co-Head of North American Media Investments Banking for J.P. Morgan. Collins is the co-founder and managing principal of Forge Capital Partners, a private equity firm based in Tampa. Very interesting to know that, right? Peter Collins, the chair of Florida State's Board of Trustees, He's an equity partner guy himself. Roughly three months later, on December 2nd, 2022, J.P. Morgan Asset Management Vice Chair and the Florida State alum, Ash Bell Williams, connected Kyle Clark, the school's senior VP for Finance and Administration, with Peter Lovett, Executive Director of J.P. Morgan Investment Management. 
Peter specialized in liquid, liquidity solutions for JP Morgan clients. William said in an email introduction. With that, I am hopeful this is the beginning of the productive discussions that will be helpful to FSU. Sixth Street joined the conversation two months later. On February 7th, 2023, JP Morgan organized a call to connect Florida State administrators with Sixth Street executives. Over the course of the spring, FSU and JP Morgan engaged with both Sixth Street and Art Coast, Art Toast, two of the more active private equity firms in global sports. Sixth Street owns hospitality provider legends and an investor in Real Madrid, Barcelona, and the San Antonio Spurs and the Bay Area's new and WSL expansion team. Art Toast, which is sports specific, has made more than two dozen investments, including passive stakes in Liverpool, the Boston Red Sox, the Dodgers, the Golden State Warriors, the Philadelphia 76ers, and the New Jersey Devils. Navigate, the sports and entertainment consultant, was also involved in the process, according to emails. Why financial specifics are unclear. Both 6th Street and Arctos went through some form of term sheet review in late May and early June. Florida State later put together a document dated June 8th that compared the two firms' positions on a possible investment. The version of that document provided to Sport Sportico is heavily redacted. But it does provide some information about where, about where talks stood at the time. It lists Arctos' initial purchase that, um, of about amount of $75 million. Six Streets is redacted. The document also suggests Six Street and Arctos had differing positions on FSU's intellectual property license, with Six Street wanting the license to be exclusive, where Arctos was fine with the school's desire for a non-exclusive IP license to be granted to the newly formed company. The school also built out a 28-page financial model dated August 2023 and marked strictly private and confidential. The document projects massive jumps. It projects massive jumps in the Seminoles' revenue in the incoming years, including its conference distribution share, going from $44.3 million in 2023 to $84. $0.5 in 2027, owing to an anticipated bump in payouts from the college football playoff. That is quite a jump. It might be a little bit too optimistic, in my opinion, here at PATC. We shall see what that amount is for every Power 4 school Um we're going to find out, hopefully, in the next six months. The school projected those conference distribution figures reaching $187.7 million by 2024. It is worth noting that projections were made months prior to Florida State Board voting to try and sue its way out of the ACC. That litigation is currently ongoing. And another email attachment labeled FSU's Sixth Street Dil Diligence Tracker includes a list of dozens of categories of financial information, requests, and questions such as how is FSU thinking about a new multimedia rights deal? According to the document, the school was currently exploring various third-party relationships and running a bid process in September of 2023 with an expectation it would make a new partner selection mid-October 2023. However, the school, which has most recently partnered with Learfield, Learfield has not made any public indications that it's looking to switch to another multimedia rights company or that it has amended its Learfield deal. deal. According to its most recent NCAA revenue and expense disclosure, Florida State made $172 million on athletics in 2022-2023 school year, a $22 million spike from the prior 12 months. This led to a reported athletic department debt of $2.5 million in FY23, 
after the school reported a 10.4 million surplus uh, in, in, in the previous year. The financial picture, according to FSU's board members, will start to get more challenging. The school says the current revenue gap between FSU and its comparable peers in the richer Big Ten and the SEC conferences was about $7 million this year. That will grow to $30 million per year next year as realignment and the new TV deals start to take shape. The gap is a big part of the school's desire to lead the ACC. A lawyer for the board said in December that it would cost $572 million to immediately buy out of the league. They're trying, of course, to get that number down in the courts. Sixth Street's other sports investments includes a series of summer expeditions played in the U.S. between some of the world's most valuable soccer teams. In July, a Sixth Street managing director invited a group of Florida State officials, including Collins and President McAuliffe, to a matchup between Barcelona and Real Madrid at AT&T Stadium in Dallas. And finally, in the article, not to be greedy, but it would be impossible for us to bring a couple of our larger boosters with us, Collins replied, the chair of the Florida State Board of Trustees. It would be a very nice trip for them to go there with the three of us. If it's not possible, that's fine. Just trying to get the most mileage out of this for the university. All that information, all that communication in an email was picked up by Sportico. FOIA request back in August. They got it on Tuesday. Yesterday, a large part of that was redacted, especially when it came to some financial um, back and forth with Sixth Street between Florida State and the private equity firm Sixth Street. A lot of that information was redacted. One of the big things we learned in this uh, FOIA request by that Sportico did in August that they received in Tuesday is this, is FSU was at least starting to begin talks with private equity firms by 2022, the summer of 2022. It could have happened before that, but at least by the summer of 2022, Florida State was already, well, Project Osceola had begun. Holy smokes. So Florida State has been planning a possible partnership for, we know the reasons why, with a private equity firm. It looks like it might be Sixth Street with J.P. Morgan in that relationship. Man, oh man, let's, uh, we're going to have to buckle up. Private equity firms, we had a report a couple days ago. We did a live show on it. The private equity firms are circling around the whole landscape of college football, of college athletics, because they believe the market it is it is it has a lot of potential but it is all screwed up in how it runs itself it's inefficient and that's what private equity firms that's what they enjoy they like to get into those marketplaces where there's a lot of value there untapped value but because of its inefficiencies and how it's run it's all screwed up florida state could be the first could be the first to dabble into the private equity world. But let me ask you a question before we end episode 365. And please put it down in the comment section below the video, your answer. Do you think that Florida State is the only ACC school that has talked with private equity firms in the last 18 months? Yes or no? Let me know. We know that Florida State is the only school that has sued the ACC. The only one that has stepped out and got into the courts, Leon County, ACC, Mecklenburg County. But are they the, are they the only ACC school that has talked, has had deep discussions with private equity firms? My answer is no, they're not the only ones. So buckle up. Brace for impact. Please stick with us here at Peek Around the Corner. FSU's Project Osceola is in effect. Until next time, from all of us at PATC, to all of you, please, please, you all take great care of each other. Thank you so very much.